Hey guys, uh, Mr. Barton here with a quick tutorial. I want to talk a little bit now about how our brain will get in the way of our drawing. And I'm going to show you, so let's jump over to my document camera. Make it full screen so you guys can see what I want you to see. Alright, so uh, one of the big ways that our brain will get in the way of a drawing is we, we uh, overthink what we're going to be doing. Instead of looking at what we're drawing, and doing our best to draw it, we'll overthink it sometimes. So I'm going to start with something uh, that a lot of people might say is fairly simple. I'm going to draw a cylinder. So just going to draw this shape, which is an ellipse. And now I'm going to draw uh, the two sides of the cylinder. And here's a mistake that I frequently see with students. So to draw the bottom of this, our brain tells us that this cylinder, this glass, or this trash can or whatever it is that we decide this is going to be is sitting on a flat surface. So a lot of times our brains will do this. Draw the bottom of the cylinder looking like that, which is, uh, it's one way to do it, but it's not, if we wanted to represent what we're looking at accurately, this is not the correct way to do it. So let's, let's draw another uh, cylinder. I'm going to start by again drawing that, uh, that initial shape, which is called an ellipse. The, the um, narrower or the more stretched out I make my ellipse, the kind of further away that uh, shape is. So if I, uh, let's say I draw another ellipse, and this one I make a little bit more round or closer to the shape of a circle, that means that I'm approaching that. It's going to look like I'm kind of over the top of it. So this one I, I'm kind of looking at from, uh, you know, further away, I would say. So I'm going to draw two parallel lines on either side of it. And then if I want the bottom to look like it actually looks like in the real world, what I want to do is I want to take this shape, this uh, curve shape that I've drawn up here, and I want to recreate it down here at the bottom. So I'm going to try to make a parallel line with this curve shape. And that would be the bottom of my cylinder. Uh, so that you can see now that makes it just a little bit more realistic than this first one that I drew where Oftentimes the brain overrides and says it's on a flat surface, it should be flat like that. Let's complete this surface, or this uh, cylinder, and then I'll show you one uh, more uh, thing that will be helpful when creating your cylinder drawings. So again, I'm going to look at this bottom half of this ellipse shape that I've created, and I just want to try to mirror it. I want to try to recreate it down here. So it's kind of a deeper bowl. And there you can see now I've got two cylinder shapes that I've just created. If you want to make this look even more three-dimensional, I'm going to show you a quick tip, and then I'll have another tutorial for shading the cylinder. But the quick tip is just to create a drop shadow. So I'm going to draw a line here that represents kind of the edge of my drop shadow. And I'm going to draw another line over here on the other side that should be parallel with this line. And then if I want to make this look like it's being lit, I'm going to use that control technique that we practiced in the earlier shading drawing. And I'm just going to color from this edge straight away from the cylinder. If I want to make it a precise shadow, then I'm going to think about the top of this shadow should have a curve just like the top of my cylinder and it should be darkest closest to the cylinder and get lighter as it moves away. So there's kind of a quick tutorial on how to draw a cylinder and to keep our brains from getting in the way.